Hello, this is Dofan Hika and you're welcome back to Marriage Dipped in Blood. It's been a quite interesting last few weeks and I'm sure many people have questions and different thoughts on their minds and I hope we take this time out to really reflect on the most important things in life but I trust God that we're staying safe, we're keeping our eyes on Jesus because in all these things we know that his plans for us are of good and not of evil to give us a hope and a future so we know that in Christ Jesus we have a hope. We do not complain or cry and whine like the world does. We know that everything is working together for the good of them that love the Lord and for them who are called according to his purpose. So I just want you to stay encouraged, stay hopeful. Um, things can only get better. So let's go on with what I have to, for today. It's the last Friday in this month and I'll be concluding on my series, Love Is. And I really like this part. In the Old Testament, it was so difficult to walk with God, <laughs> to serve God. Everything seemed so uptight, so difficult, because that is how the law is. And men had hardened hearts. And so the commandments had to be written on tablets of stones. And in fact, God could not speak to them directly. He had to speak through the prophet to the people and they couldn't speak to god they had to speak to god through the prophet so it was really kind of complicated and difficult to actually do the things that god commanded them to do there were 10 beside the 10 commandments that most of us already know there were hundreds and hundreds of other commandments the people had to keep and it was just impossible if you failed in one commandment, the Bible says it means that you have failed in all, all the rest of the commandments. So it was so difficult. Thank God for the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Thank God that Jesus came and he gave us a new heart. When we became born again, he gave us a new heart. And this heart is a heart of flesh. This heart is a heart where God could actually now write his laws upon and the law that God has written upon our hearts is the law of love. And the Bible says that in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, that a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another and you have, as I have loved you. He said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. And so this is a new commandment. And in this one commandment, you fulfill the whole law. And that's why the Bible says in Romans 5, 5, that the love of God has been shed up abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So God can now lead us through the Holy Spirit that is in us. We no longer have to be led by rules and regulations, do's and don'ts. It's now easier for us to walk with God. Our relationship with God now is really smooth and sweet. We don't need like someone talking to God for us anymore. God can talk directly to us. Okay, so let's read um, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. To 10. Owe oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law for this thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not kill thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not covet if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself so you see to to keep the commandment of love is to fulfill all the law that's why when i hear people say oh love is not enough love, love is not enough when it comes to marriage, 
um, like you do not understand what love really is if you really understand love you will know that love is more than enough this love we're talking about the Bible says many waters cannot quench it there is faith there is hope and there's love but the greatest of all this is love faith does not work outside of love hope will not work outside of love all these things are hinged on our love work work first of all our belief our faith in the love of God and our ability to operate in the same love that God has for us towards one another and so love is the greatest if you really truly understand what love is it's all that you need in a marriage if you walk in love towards your neighbor which is your spouse right now as we're talking about marriage walk in love towards your spouse you never think about cheating on them there will be no adultery in the there will be no thought of it. There will be no thought of divorce when you are walking in love. There will be, you'll be quick to forgive. There will be no stealing. There will, you, stealing means different things. Depriving your spouse of your time, of your attention, of sex and things like that. It's, it's stealing. It's depriving them of something. As Paul calls it defrauding. So withhold sexual um, intimacy with your spouse. It's defrauding your spouse. So I think these things will not happen. To covet, to compare yourself with each other, you know, things that happen in many relationships will not happen if we understood this commandment of love towards one another. This is the greatest. You know, some people, they when they go to church or they have opportunities to serve in the local assembly, they give their all, their time, they are 100% in their unit, in their de church departments, they are 100% there. Before you know, before the pastor calls them, they are running there. Before the unit leader calls them, they are already there. But they are not there for their spouse like that. They are not giving them attention like they should. And I don't believe it should be so. Love towards one another, to your neighbor as God has loved you and your neighbor your first neighbor is your spouse this is what the scripture is saying to us oh no man anything but to love one another he that loves fulfills all the law and so we need to open our hearts our spiritual eyes to really understand the depth of god's love towards us and that way we'll be able to allow it flow through us towards our spouse think about it god says he will never leave you nor forsake you as in he won't leave you physically and he will not forsake you emotionally he's there for you you know like in this season when um, we are forced to practice what is it called social distancing you have no choice but to stay home with your family you could be there physically but your mind is somewhere else and that is a mistake that we shouldn't do we shouldn't let um, technology run us. Don't let your phone be your master. Before the phone beeps, you are already running towards your phone. You're always on the phone when you have your spouse right there with you to talk to and to connect with. And so being there physically is really important. Do not be disconnected in your emotions while you're present in the physical okay so if you do not know how to do anything if you don't know what to do just know how to love like god has loved you because by loving one another jesus says you fulfill the whole law and so i pray that as we think about this scriptures think about these words that i've spoken and in this season of <laughs> isolation in our homes i think it should be an opportunity for us to reflect a time for us to really use and make up for lost moments that we've had with us we have lost moments with our spouses times that we would have shared we had to attend to other businesses other jobs and things a I pray that you will use this time wisely and practice loving one another. There was a 
a time my husband did something i don't even remember he was just being mischievous we had we have those moments and i was like i really don't like you right now <laughs> i'm sure there are times that you may not really like your spouse but because you love them you will stick with them you will stay with them forever you will be there come rain or sunshine and those moments pass away you know that's why love is the real deal love is not um it's not just a feeling it's a decision that we make it's a choice that we make a commitment that we make and so the commandment of love toward us from god was not just a suggestion it's a commandment like you do not have a choice this is what you must do to enjoy a fruitful marriage life to enjoy a successful christian life to enjoy living life in general you need to walk in love the god kind of love that is what stands the test of time we want to be known as someone who walked in love we don't want to go away pass away from this life and say oh he had so much money she had so much money she did this and that and that but there was no love the bible says you're just like a noisy gong you know you can do everything that there is to do but if there is no love it's just a waste of time and so i believe that you have learned something today or you have been reminded or refreshed about these things so I encourage you to go on or maybe you don't have the opportunity to see to go out right now just walk in love obey the commandments of love today in your home start from there they say charity begins at home and charity is love yeah and so love your wife love your husband love your children with the love of god be patient towards them be kind towards them next time the next teaching i'm going to talk from the love chapter first corinthians 13 and we'll look at those characteristics one after the other to know exactly how the love of god functions and i believe that it'll make things easier for us well maybe not easier but worthwhile yeah relationships are not always so easy but they're possible and we have the mighty Holy Spirit in us. We have God with us, leading us and guiding us and making all things beautiful in our lives. So, cherish the beautiful weekend, a love-filled weekend. And God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.